So a few months ago, we went over one of the fastest speedruns for Cuphead, where you can beat the game in under 20 minutes. And with the upcoming Cuphead DLC just around the corner, I wanted to revisit the base game one last time, and today we're going to be checking out the Army% percent speedrun, where Cuphead basically invents a cloning device to create an army of mug men, mug mans, to absolutely ravage anything and everything that gets in their way to beat the game incredibly fast. And with all of that said, let's see how fast we can beat Cuphead with an army of mugs at our disposal. Alright, so seeing all of these clones is cool and all, but first things first, just how do we go about cloning Mugman? Well, without getting into too much technical detail, you can use some third-party software to basically make your computer think one controller is actually two. Then all you really need to do is pause the game, then remove the second player, and then almost instantly rejoin. There's only like a two-frame window that you get after removing the second player, so timing can be a bit tricky. I found that basically removing and joining at the same time seemed to work best for me. And yeah, if you get the timing right, bam, we just created another Mugman. And you can copy as many as you'd like, with the only limit being how much your PC can handle. After a few too many Mugman, it gets, uh, hard to play to say the least. Unfortunately, these copied Mugmen don't carry over between stages, so you do have to redo this glitch on every boss fight you get to. Oh, I should mention that you need to be running this game on PC, if it wasn't clear already, if you'd like to try this out for yourself. Anyways, with that little tutorial out of the way, let's get to running and gunning. So since we're running the pre-patch version of Cuphead, we also get access to a bunch of the other exploits we saw in my previous video to save some time. And one of these we get to see right away, as instead of actually having to go through the tutorial section and such, once we load into the room here, we can simply exit to map to completely skip all of it. Then after collecting three freebie coins from Applefella here, we get to the first and last run and gun section of this speedrun. For this stage, you don't really want to create any clones as it will just eat up time and damage output isn't really that important here, so it doesn't really serve to help much yet. So, you just gotta jump and dash through the level and make sure you collect all five coins on the way to the end. Now with eight coins in total, we can pay Porkrind a visit here to purchase two weapon upgrades, the Lobber as well as the Roundabout weapon. Now if you've seen my previous Cuphead speedrun video, you probably already know where this is going. So, the original pre-patch version of Cuphead actually has an exploit called WSG, or the Weapon Swap Glitch, where by quickly swapping between both weapon types, you can effectively double your damage output rate. And this actually stacks with each Mugman that you copy, so yeah, you can essentially multiply your damage output by 2, 4, or really however much you want. So, this Weapon Swap Glitch coupled with Cuphead and his pal army of Mugmen can deal some devastating damage. Now that's a lot of talk building it up, but let's see how it performs as we get to our first battle in this game against the Root Pack. Now one thing I immediately learned is that it's incredibly important to keep track of where all the clones are, as it's really difficult to control all of them without taking damage. So one of the best strategies for this run is to always try to keep the characters as close together as possible to avoid any strays getting hit. Anyways, with a bunch of clones spawned in here, they all made quick work of each of the veggies, basically only letting them live for a few moments each, and thus finishing the whole fight in just 28 seconds. Next up we got Ribby and Croaks, and this fight isn't all too bad, in the first few phases anyway, but things get cranked up once reaching the final slot machine section. I kept getting the frogs, or snakes, or whatever these are, resulting in a bunch of spiked platforms coming out. Now, as I mentioned, keeping all the characters as close as possible is very important, so when these get thrown on the field, it's very difficult to keep all the fellas together, and yeah, this just makes it quite challenging. Thankfully though, we still do a ton of damage, so by hoping that just enough cups stay alive, I was able to squeak my way through this one. Next is Goopy, and this fella, as usual, is incredibly easy. With only a few clones, I was able to finish him off before he was able to even transition to his final phase, and the whole fight, again, took less than half a minute. Now, one thing I should bring up here is the time sink from trying to do the cloning glitch. Unfortunately, the time still goes when you pause and try to do the glitch, so any unsuccessful cloning attempts like this one do end up wasting some time. 
So, for example, in the last fight here, although the fighting only took like 20 seconds, all the failed, wasted attempts did end up adding a decent chunk of time. So in short, although the fights do end up being faster with the higher damage output, the added time from cloning actually doesn't really end up saving any time. Anyways, then after doing another little trick by just exiting to the map here, we can skip having to go all the way to the right of the screen to save a few seconds. And then, just like that, we're onto our first airplane level of this run. Thankfully, our cloning machine is advanced enough to not only clone mugs, but also planes. So in all of these stages, we can multiply our damage output as well. This fight honestly wasn't all too bad, especially since I was able to shoot out several rockets at a time for some devastating damage to Hilda here. On the other hand though, one bad thing that I noticed in this fight is that when not all of the characters have a super EX move saved up, if you try to use it and ram into the opponent, the rest of the planes that aren't nukes will still take damage. So yeah, I found it much better to just use the mini rockets instead of saving up for the big nukes. Anyways, with these mini rockets, quickly we can get to the final moon phase, and yeah, pretty easy fight. Next up we got Plant Boy, and although I thought this fight would be easy, it honestly was pretty challenging. For starters, you have to hit Plant Boy in the top right here, so I tried to stack up my characters on this platform, but it's pretty small, at least for like 6 fellas, so it was pretty tricky to keep all of them together while also dodging the seeds that fall from above and the vines that grow from below. But after focusing everyone together and landing some absolutely gnarly EX hits, Cagney was down for the count, barely being able to even get to his final phase. Now next up is probably my least favorite fight in the game here against Beppy the Clown, and honestly, I found this to be one of the most challenging battles of this run. Not only does Beppy zip around at the start, making it hard to create some clones, but this also makes it tough to keep them together, which in turn makes it hard to avoid damage from Beppy dashing as well as the ducks above. Things get even more challenging when having to deal with the roller coaster coupled with Beppy's other attacks. Now, for whatever reason, after dying several times, on one attempt, I was able to get Beppy like stuck in between two phases. Both the balloon phase and the horse phase were kinda just stuck in the damage state in the middle, and yeah, I could still damage them, so I'm not gonna complain. I just fired away, and thankfully, that's a wrap for this fight. Jimmy the Great is next, and although the intro phase can be kind of difficult with all the garbage being thrown around, after this phase is done, by just spamming some rockets, Cuppet and Jimmy won't be a problem for long. Now, interestingly, in this fight, I had so many characters shooting on screen that the stacking of the bullet sound effect seemed to have caused the background music to glitch out too. Baroness Von Bonbon bon is another really easy fight for this run. All three of the minions that start off the fight can be defeated within seconds, and really, only the section at the end is a bit tricky. Similar to what we saw with Cagney Carnation, here we just have one platform to deal with in order to keep fire on the Baroness. And since the castle starts moving, it gets a little tricky, but thankfully the damage output makes it pretty quick. And once this fight was done, I ran into yet another weird glitch. The ground under the castle just kept on moving, and it just revealed this dark void under the stage. Pretty weird. Now, although the first two airplane levels weren't too bad, the next one here against Wally Warbles gets a bit more tricky. Here, it's more important than ever to try and keep all the planes close together as dodging the eggshells, the fury of feathers, as well as the orbiting spike eggs can get pretty rough. Now, thankfully, if you manage to get through all of that, you can get to one of the most satisfying sections of all the plane levels here. So since the rockets do more damage to enemies with a bigger horizontal hitbox, with all the planes in the bottom left, the rockets can do some insane damage to Wally in the stretcher here, with each rocket hitting numerous times. Yeah, the whole phase ended up lasting only a few short seconds. Unfortunately, things don't get much easier here in the next fight against Grim Matchstick. Now, single platforms were tricky enough earlier, but here, not only do all of the cloud platforms move, but also if you fall off, you'll almost always take damage to boot. 
It was incredibly hard to spawn in more clones as well as keep them together here. So honestly, this was probably the most difficult fight of the run so far when having the clones along. It took me several attempts, but after being able to keep at least a few clones around until the end phase, a few EX attacks quickly put Grim Matchstick to bed. Now on to Inkwell Isle 3, we start things off with yet another pretty tough fight against Rumor Honeybottoms. While Grim Matchstick had horizontal moving platforms that made it difficult, here we got vertical moving ones which add a similar challenge to the battle. The worst part was either jumping too high to not see where I was, or getting hit near the top, giving me virtually no time to parry the spirits to bring them back. So yeah, pro tip with all of the clones, stay away from the top of the screen. But just like with a bunch of the other fights, after grouping everyone together, Rumor Honeybottoms was no match for the absolutely devastating wave of blasts. Now next up is probably the most challenging airplane fight of this run, and that probably isn't coming as much of a surprise to you if you've played this game before. Dr. Call and his robot are pretty ruthless. There's just so much going on all the time, and you're almost forced to go up to the top of the screen at the start, and like I said earlier, that's no good. Things don't get much easier in the final phase as you have to constantly dodge a whole bunch of gem blasts in addition to these electrical barrier things. It certainly isn't easy, but if you can lay down enough fire on the crazy doctor, that brings another enemy to heal. Now after that chain of difficult battles, I'm happy to say that the fight here against Sally stage play is thankfully much easier. This is like the first fight in a while where we have some nice flat stationary ground. Yeah, Sally is absolutely no match for this barrage of lobby and boomerangy boys. And we can chalk up another fight where I was able to finish it without even allowing the enemy to reach their final phase. When starting the fight against Werner Vermin here, I was actually kinda worried that his rolling around would be tricky to deal with, but I guess with the clone army, I was able to deal enough damage fast enough that there really wasn't much to worry about at all. Yeah, the whole fight was done in like 30 seconds. Captain Brinybeard is next, and although there isn't much to really talk about in terms of the fight here, when doing my run, this was like the closest I ever came to losing a battle. I basically died and defeated the ship at the same time, like there must have been only a few frames difference here. I honestly thought that I lost the battle at first, but thankfully I guess fortune was in my favor, so I was able to put this battle behind me pretty fast. The fight with Calamaria here is a bit tricky with all the puffer fish and stuff on screen, but honestly we've seen more difficult airplane battles already, so this one should be a breeze if you manage to get through the other fights before this. Man, I'm telling you, those stacked rockets definitely aren't something to mess with. Now for the final overworld boss fight, we got Phantom Express, and yeah, we have another single platform that we have to deal with. Honestly, for this one, I ended up not making too many clones as they were pretty tough to keep together here, at least for the first few phases. But I did end up using some time in between phases to make more clones, and this ended up making the other phases pretty dang easy. That said, the last phase was still pretty tough since it required a lot of movement, which tended to separate the cups from the mugs here. But after a few attempts, that's another battle in the bag. Now with all of those bosses done, it's time to move on to the final stretch and start the fight with King Dice. Now unfortunately, for whatever reason, the cloning glitch doesn't work properly for any of the fights leading up to and including the King Dice fight. Basically, by activating the cloning glitch here, Mugman ended up just disappearing, and then once Cuphead died, the game just softlocked. I couldn't move, restart, or even pause to close the game. Unfortunately, I had to restart the entire game, which kinda killed my run, but oh well, let's still power through and finish things off here. So yeah, for this speedrun category, it's best to just battle through all the sub-bosses and King Dice solo. So, there's not really anything crazy for these fights, so let's just skip to taking down King Dice and getting on to the last fight against the Devil. Now, apparently, going to the King Dice fight at all ends up triggering the softlock glitch on any other fight too. So, after restarting the game again, now we can get to the fight with the Devil in Clone Army style. 
The army of mugs made the first phase pretty easy, and after jumping down, I also learned that the game basically resets the protagonist, so all the clones were gone, leaving me to turn on the cloning machine once again. And with a whole bunch of clones, the last phase here was honestly incredibly easy, like that was the fastest I have ever gotten through the devil fight. And just like that, that's the end of the speedrun. Now on my first try, I was still learning the cloning technique, so my time was just under an hour and a half, so nothing special, but this was about half the time it took me to beat the game normally, only a few weeks earlier. And my run certainly wasn't anywhere as fast as the current world record holders for this category, GOTGM, where he was able to clear the whole game in only 23 and a half minutes. Anyways, that's speedrunning Cuphead with an army of Mugmen clones, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I'll likely be uploading some more Cuphead videos when the DLC drops, so be sure to subscribe to find your way back in the future. And while you're here, check out some of my other speedrunning videos. And as always, gamers, I will see you in a bit.